LG booth. We're gonna go look at the heat pump chiller. Air cooled heat pump chiller with Steve. We're gonna get this. Well, we, we, I mean, if you wanna talk about this, we can. I mean, Let's talk about yeah, it. Really, really yeah, quick. If, get it here, it doesn't mean it has to be released. Correct. We're here. No, I, so, I'm pretty smart. <laughs> I'm pretty smart ass, so there we go. Well, it'll work out well. I, d I at least know that's a chiller. Yes. A centrifugal type chiller. Absolutely. It's it got a it's got a logo on it that I've never seen on a, yeah, a well, centrifugal chiller before. So tell so me we, what's going on. Well, First of all, can you introduce yourself? I can. Sorry. Uh, Steve Scarborough, I'm a senior vice president and general manager of LG Air Conditioning Technologies. Oh. And uh, thank you. I appreciate very much for the time to kind of walk through this booth and really just give you a kind of a Excellent. little overview on some of the products that we're, we're focusing and showcasing on. And, and you're right, this is a large centrifugal chiller. We've been building chillers at LG since 19. 1968. So uh, a lot of lot, people probably don't know that. A lot of people don't know yeah. that, but it's globally. And you know, for us, it's it's looking at two things. First and foremost, and we'll we'll get to the inverter scroll chiller we introduced a couple years ago. But this is, if you think about the the expansion of AI, right? We hear this all the time. Oh we we hear companies like Microsoft and others talk about artificial intelligence and how do we integrate that into our day to day. We do the same thing. How do we integrate AI into our products? Well, with that, we're going to need more cooling for server space. And so without getting too technical for this, right. uh, the opportunity presents itself with a lot of our partnerships uh, globally. And so Microsoft being one of them where we share resources uh, to help us develop AI. So when wow. I say share, right. we're, we're borrowing some of Microsoft's resources to help us develop AI in our product. Bill, are you calling, talking to Bill every day? Talking to every day. <laughs> You know, and, and it's funny you say that because in return, what they want is to, to have a more efficient product right. as we start to get specific into the AI and, and more importantly, the chip side. So yeah. how do we get right to the heating source? And, yeah. and that's really within the chip cooling and the cold plate stuff that we can do uh, with these centrifugal chillers. And, and, and so. the data center stuff from an HVAC standpoint is insane right it's now. It's insane. It, it's the buzzword. It's the right. new, uh, data center's the new buzzword, right? And it's and so. efficiency is a, you know, it's nice to be sustainable and to have efficiency, but it's almost a necessity because we don't have enough power for it, some of these places. It's an absolute necessity. Right? So what people are looking for today with these data centers is, is how do we reduce energy consumption right, and how do we right. reduce water consumption? It's extremely important for all of these data centers to make sure that the products that they're looking at, not only for today, but meet tomorrow's expectations. You know, we, we've seen many announcements as of late around the massive amount of resources that are going towards data centers. Right. And comes as no surprise, as we uh, put our booth together this year, we really wanted to bring our big centrifugal chillers over. Absolutely. And, uh, and maybe disrupt the status quo a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're getting a lot of attention to yeah, it. You mentioned the water side of, of data centers. Yes. So I did some calculations. Uh -oh. Back of the napkin calculations, right? So 1.6 minutes of chat GPT in the States equates to 50 gallons of water. Yeah. So water side, because of the condenser side of the water-cooled machines, some of them are air-cooled, but yep. most of the big, huge tons yeah, of water-cooled, yeah. water right? And I so. think you're seeing that natural uh, progression to more of the water-cooled and air-cooled. I think traditionally today, right. uh, if you had to put a percentage out there, the higher percentage would be air-cooled. But right. you're seeing a lot of momentum going towards these water pools. A little bit more flexible, but mostly because you're starting to see kind of a starting point as one gigawatt and beyond. And so, I mean, this is just a massive amount of heat that is being generated. And to do that, you right. need to start to transition to the water pool. Plus, look, yeah, there are certain areas of the country that, that high ambient is also a concern when you have yeah. air cool. So there's just many different factors that allow this particular machine to be more efficient. And, and then, you know, look, it just as we move forward, we're also making sure that we're globally conscious and that we continue to drive towards, you know, those low GWPs, make sure we have the right refrigerant right, in it. Right. And so it's, it's, there's multi-fingered, I like to say. It's, it's water, it's electricity, it's making sure we're conscious around our GWP and our refrigerant, and all of that is this. Yeah. And so it's extremely exciting for us as we move forward. We've, we've been very blessed to be able to have quite a few conversations here at the show around here. And we look forward to our teams, you know, working with our reps and working with their customers and working with these large entities around data centers, specifically as we bring this into the U.S. so that we can exceed what they need today. But more importantly, we can help them design what they need for the future. Exciting. Yeah. So really talk to me about specs. Single stage? Yeah, so a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. So this particular one is a single compressor, but again, just depending on the RT side, uh, we can go up to dual compressors. And again, there's just, we, we are very blessed to be able to do 
almost everything with this chiller in house. Right. Uh, there's there's one particular RT of air cooled stroke chillers that we source the compressor out, but everything in this particular machine, LG builds. The this compressor an, and everything. All LG machine. Wow. One hundred percent. That's impressive. Yeah, What's absolutely. the refrigerant on this? This one I can't tell you. We'll check. I it. can actually tell you, but we'll I can't tell it. you. We'll put an AI version of you here. When Thank we find you. It out. <laughs> there's there's a reason I can't tell you that. Oh, you, yeah. it's not that you don't know. You can't tell us. I, I'm totally fair. with you. That is that is that correct. makes sense. Okay. Maybe offline I can. There's tell you a lot of strategic. To what I will what I will kind of tease is it's a one GWP refrigerant that's in this actual machine here. Oh. This this machine will probably not come to the U.S. Uh, because we're not quite ready for one GWP So yet. global warming potential is one. That's right. So I can, in my head, think about what the refrigerant is, but Absolutely. I won't say it either. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Fair enough. Thank you. Awesome. I got to keep got some inver- secrets for the viewers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no doubt. No got to keep so. you coming back and check on this. That's right. Part two. That'll part be two. part two. So part inverter two. driven. Yes, sir. I see that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of things you look at. And so yeah, without giving it away, if you look at my chart over here, and I'll kind of go through it. So. This, I was joking a little bit, but. Here, let's walk over here. Yeah, absolutely, we, we can kind of get this, and you can see, maybe if we can get this in here, I'll kind of show you some of the some of the features here, and so may, I, I won't be as coy yeah, because, right yeah, I won't be as coy because we actually put it up here. So this particular is an R1233ZD refrigerant. That's this actual machine. Oh. But what you'll see from, from us here in the US is gonna be the R513A refrigerant. That is, that will be the US model. And so, for us. Right here. Yeah, absolutely, okay, that, that's it. the top one here. But what I want everybody to understand is, is that we are already building product to exceed what the requirements are here in the US. And yeah. so uh, many other parts of the world, that is required. That particular low GWP product is required. So, so what do we do? And remember I talked a lot about making sure that the energy efficiency, we had to meet these certain expectations. We need to, and we talk up here about world best performance, and I'll promise you my my lawyers have made sure this is accurate. So if we get over here and we start to think about the KW per ton, and look at that at a 0.29, that's what these facility owners are looking for in their chiller product. Oil free, so I talked a lot about reliability. So when we start to think about make bearing and reliability and all of the parts that go with it, it's extremely important. So it has to be efficient and it has to be reliable, very so reliable. So it is a mag bearing chiller? Absolutely. Wow. And then a, the AI, you know, I talked about, you know, the AI is great and, and we le- think about the chillers and we think about how do we, how do we cool the chips and all that, but how do we build the AI into this too? Yeah. How do we get the best of both worlds? How do we not only have artificial intelligence helping to keep artificial intelligence alive? Yeah. Think about yeah. that for a minute. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty like cool. It. That's a bumper sticker right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Or a t-shirt at least. Uh, maybe a t-shirt, <laughs> I don't know. They're better than the last t-shirt I had anyways. <laughs> that's gr- that's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. It's good stuff. When's the date, you think? We're, we're taking pre-orders. How are you doing? Taking pre-orders now. <laughs> uh, so my team is working uh, with, with our reps uh, around the country. Yeah. And we're making sure that we're meeting and exceeding specs. Yeah. Uh, we're working with all entities. One of the things that I think that we provide is we provide the opportunity for flexibility. Mm-hmm. So uh, we can get in very early and we can start to develop the actual spec for tomorrow. Today, we have a set of specs that we feel very comfortable with that we're seeing globally and here in the US. And those are the, the opportunities for us to drive sales for 25, 26. But as we start to get into 27 and beyond, it's, it's going to be around our product. That is wow. with the chip cooling, that is with the, the cooling distribution units, that is with the wall fan coils. I mean, we'll, we'll have everything to be able to be a one-stop shop for the data center. And you know, I, I talk a lot about the data center because that's the rifled approach we're taking today. But as we continue to increase our supply, our capacity, and, and our expertise here in the US, we'll expand that out. Yeah. No doubt about Exciting. it. Exciting. Yeah. R- really, really, really interesting. And definitely, I can tell you, most folks had absolutely no idea that this existed in the LG world, unless they had been invited to, to come to our factories. Yeah, and they, yeah. They've seen this somewhere. We, One of our factory tours in Changwon, we show a lot of our very large centrifugal chillers that operate our building. And people are amazed at 
the sound levels of, of these huge chillers operating and we can still have this same conversation. Yeah. And so that, that seems to get people, you know, kind of thinking about, wow, what can we do? You know, how can we bring this to the U.S.? And, and it's not always as easy as having a great product. You have to have the channel. You have to have the expertise. You have to have everything to go with it to be able to support it. And as we continue to grow and expand what we do here with LG, expand our product portfolio, be the one LG or the LG everywhere, as we like to say, mm. uh, solution, then this is just a natural progression for us. Impressive. Yeah. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I am as well. <laughs> got high expectations. Yeah, we got a lot of, we got all kinds of stuff. Well, it's going to be hard to top that, but. Yeah, that's why I wanted to start here. I said, it was, this one, this one's going to be difficult. So I we agree, got this but, coming. Yeah. But right now, what's really hot are the packaged heat pumps. Well, you know, I can tell you. So uh, maybe it's a uh, little brother, little sister, however you want to go. Yeah, yeah. Cousin. We'll see if we can squeeze it. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, and. It's and, so popular, you can't even get over here with a video camera. Well, I have some, I have some fantastic folks over here that, that know so much more about this. But what yeah. I will say. 200 tons. Is as we introduce the inverter scroll heat pump chiller, uh, we looked at it from a, from a couple different aspects. We launched this product Here we go. in the middle of COVID, where the so supply chain was extremely disruptive. Right. And but but things like schools and other entities were continuing to have either new new installs or more importantly a replacement. Still needed a product. Still needed a product. Right. So we were able to have and introduce and bring this product into the U.S. and we keep it in stock. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. We have chillers in stock. Right. In stock. And this isn't just a normal chiller. This isn't just a normal chiller. You can actually make hot water with We it. can actually make hot water with this. And so this is a heat pump chiller. And, and it's so funny, I had some conversations last night in our event where somebody's like, hey, I just realized that that inverter scroll chiller was a heat pump. And I was like, <laughs> yes, that it actually yeah. will give me hot water right, as right. well. I'm like, it will. Uh, you know, and I know we probably can't see up here, but you know, we've also brought in some of our fan coils to help complement that. And right. so being able to have a cassette a uh, low static ducted and a wall hung in, in a two pipe configuration allows just wow. extreme flexibility uh, with these particular So you've chillers. got the VRF obviously covered. Obviously the VRF. Hey, you don't want that? We got the uh, we got the chill water, hot Listen, water solution. If that's, if that's not the application for you or right, you're looking right. for a, a possibly loop booster because we've done that on the heat yeah. pump side or if you have an application that our single, double or triple frame seems to be right for you, mm -hmm. We have some fan coils uh, and, and a heat pump chilling. Like I said, you know, it, we, we're yeah. doing hot water now too, right? Yeah. So we're giving you the best of both worlds. Give you both cold water, hot water, depending on the application. And we can do this. You know, and what I like to say is as we introduce this product to our, our partners and our contractors, is that a lot of the guts inside are the same features that are traditional air cooled VRF is. So it's not a stretch. Right, right, right. Definitely not a stretch right, right. for contractors to to get into uh, the inverter scroll so chiller. If they're and familiar with the LG VRF. One hundred percent. It's it's a natural progression. Yeah, over this operates product. on on the, the same types of controls, the same type of maintenance, nice. latch tools, things like that. Uh, you're able to do with our inverter scroll chiller. That's nice. Yeah. And you don't need a boiler. They well, again, it's I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to stay off of generic applications, but yeah, yeah. Uh, theoretically, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, absolutely. You, you're you able to. You a couple of these outside making your chill water. You can do a two pipe changeover. You can do a four pipe if you got yeah, enough. Tony, depending on your valving and things like that, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of flexibility here. Uh, you absolutely. have storage tanks, things like that. I mean, you know, one of the things as we move forward, we look at energy efficiency, we, we recognize that how we store water is also a boost to energy efficiency. And so you talked about the heat pump side and heating. If you think about, Maybe not potable, not potable hot water, but how you can store hot water and keep that energy. So if you're looking at wet, wet heating or something along the side, radiant heating, however you do it, obviously we talked about the two pipe units. If you can store that, then that's less that you have to create. So all of that also mm. increases your energy efficiency. So really flexible to be able to do a lot of different things with these. And we're looking to expand uh, the, the RT on these. And so right now, we do 30, uh, we can do uh, upwards of 60. So we do upwards of 60 RT. We're looking to expand that to as much as 120. So very excited uh, to be able, nice. to, be able to, to, uh, continue to offer an in-stock chilled water solution, heat pump chilled water solution uh, to our rapid contractor network. In stock Excellent. centrally located or in stock like? In stock on the coast. So we bring in uh, Long Beach and New Jersey. So we bring product in both coasts and it's in stock in both, both of those warehouses. Yeah, some of our reps say two weeks the On theoretically, a, a chiller in today's world is upwards of a year by the time you order it. Yeah. 
and I, nice. I can probably, I love two weeks, Tony, and I'm as, almost as aggressive as you, I say three weeks, in all yeah. honesty. Yeah. For the time that that time order you get is it placed yeah, yeah. until it's delivered on the job site, we can do it in around strong. three weeks. Absolutely. Very strong. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Did a great job. We appreciate yeah. you no, I appreciate us, it. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in this I week. I appreciate the time. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Too.